Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final Your Fantasy Fire Drill of the preseason. All the preseason action, that's behind us now. We are seven days away from the kickoff between the Cowboys and the Buccaneers. I'm Matt Camp. Welcome in our fourth and final show. Now, if you drafted already, get your questions in. We'll talk about your teams. Maybe you drafted some injured players. We'll get to that coming up in just a little bit. But maybe with the extra time between the end of the preseason and the start of the regular season, you have drafts coming up. I can help you there. We'll talk about risers and fallers, my preseason takeaways, injuries, and plenty of your questions. Get them in in the BR app. I'll be answering them throughout the entire show. Let's jump into it. Injuries. We had some big ones at the end of the preseason and more news coming down in the last couple days. We'll start with your questions here. Jay Lutz, 44. I drafted J.K. Dobbins in the second round. What do I do? Please help. First of all, Jay Lutz. Sorry. And to anyone who's already drafted before the injury happened, sorry. You know injuries are going to happen. You hope when you come out of your drafts, you'll be fine. Okay, stuff will happen in the regular season. But this happened in the final preseason game, so what now? What do you do if you invested a top three or four round pick in J.K. Dobbins? First of all, don't panic. Don't go out there and make a blockbuster trade, okay? Because if you do that, you're probably going to hurt yourself elsewhere. Points don't matter where they come from if you're loaded at wide receiver if you have one of the best tight ends sometimes that means you're hurting elsewhere that might be happening right now you might be looking at your running back depth chart going oh boy what do i do you move everybody up a spot because you are going to hit the waiver wire we talked about this last week throughout the regular season you're going to win a championship because you hit the waiver wire many times at the running back position throughout the regular season. That's just the nature of the position. Now, you don't want to go into the season with someone like J.K. Dobbins already done, but do not panic. Do not make some kind of blockbuster trade. I see this happen way too often, and you hurt yourself elsewhere. Don't play on tilt. Sit back, relax, move everybody up your depth chart, and hit that waiver wire because there's a good chance some big name will end up being there after week number one. P mounts. So I drafted Irv Smith Jr. Was this a mistake? Well, hindsight, yes, of course. Now it seems like a mistake because this knee injury is terrible news for Irv Smith, and now I don't think we're going to see him at all. I also don't think you drafted Irv Smith as a top eight or top nine. You hoped maybe he would finish inside the top ten at tight end this year, and I get that. He's a talented player, but now you don't have him. And unless you had one of the top five or six tight ends, I would say you were probably going to end up with an Irv Smith or, you know, uh, a, a Gerald Everett or a Rob Gronkowski or an Evan Ingram or somebody like that where you're going, I'll play them and we'll see what happens. And I think that's what's going to happen with the tight end position. You'll be looking at matchups. You'll be streaming. Maybe you have two, you know, lower end guys and you're just alternating them or playing the matchup. I think that's what this is. So it stinks that you don't have Irv Smith, but I don't think it's a death blow to your team. Hit the waiver wire, look around, maybe play the matchup game. I'm okay with streaming tight ends, and hopefully you stick on one of them. Uh, Kaner says, what round would you consider drafting Michael Thomas, knowing he has that foot injury? Well, here's some actual news on Michael Thomas that's somewhat concrete, more than we've heard anything else. He's on the PUP list. That's six weeks. You forget about Michael Thomas. Now, where would you take him with that news? second to last round something like that if you have an IR spot maybe you know a round earlier than that and you throw him on there but I do want to say this as great as Michael Thomas has been he's been one of the best in the business reality fantasy it doesn't matter we don't know what shape game shape physical shape whatever you want to say Michael Thomas is going to be in when he is able to come back who says he'll be back for week seven that's not a guarantee and even if he is back for week seven what level is he going to be at? So don't look at the name value of Michael Thomas and go, well, I'll have a wide receiver one as soon as he comes back. I would love that to happen. I'm not banking on that happening. So good questions there as it relates to the injuries. Uh, one more I want to talk about, though, quickly. I mentioned earlier, Evan Ingram, calf injury. And this just kind of plays into the Giants as a whole. You know, he might not be out there for week one. Kenny Galladay has been banged up with that hamstring. It certainly seems like we're going to see Saquon Barkley. But Evan Ingram's numbers, to me, when they've been good, have always come because of opportunity and volume. And I say that because he's been kind of the last man standing at times where there's been other injuries there. The team's not very good. And, well, we got to go to Ingram because who else are we going to go to? That's not going to be the case this year. Now, I don't know how good the Giants are going to be. If things go well, they could be a 10-11 win team. They could win the NFC East. You could have some good fantasy production there. That's what we're all hoping for. But to me, when you have Galladay and Barkley and Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton, 
Evan Ingram is just kind of a guy, and he is someone I've been looking for reasons not to draft. This calf injury probably makes it that much easier. Let's get to some more of your questions as we talk about the risers and fallers coming off of the offseason, coming off of the preseason, and all the injury news. Uh, let's start with Justin here. Took a chance on Gerald Everett because he has a better QB and doesn't have huge competition at Seattle. What do you think? Well, by competition, if you mean at the position of tight end, sure, I don't think you know, you're worried about the other tight ends in Seattle. But the competition in terms of targets and touches, that would give me concern. Tyler Lockett, T.K. Metcalf, Chris Carson, just to name a few, all better players, all more important players for the Seattle offense. Gerald Everett, for me, I have him around 13. A low-end tight end one, a backup, you know, someone that if you pick up, you throw him in there and you hope for the best, and if it doesn't work out, you probably cut him loose and move on to somebody else. Is it a better quarterback situation than playing with Jared Goff? Of course it is, but I don't know if the situation as a whole is exactly optimistic for Gerald Everett being a great tight end. He's just kind of there. He's not really a riser or a faller to me because I didn't have him that high to begin with. Uh, moving on here to Jay Dawes. Jay Dawes says, is it crazy to pull the trigger on Najee in the first round, pick seven, 14 team. So as we talk risers and fallers here, I say he's a riser, but I don't think he's a riser all the way to pick seven. End of the first round, probably somewhere in the, the, the first half of the second round for me. Najee Harris, based on when he has played, and the other running backs there in Pittsburgh, everything has looked good. You don't have to worry about a rookie running back. You don't have to go, well, he hasn't played before in the NFL. I can't trust him. There have been plenty of good rookie running backs that have come through at a high level, including players that you're going to play from week one and players are going to go in the top five. Zeke did it. Alvin Kamara did it. You know, Christian McCaffrey did it. Najee Harris is going to be just fine. So seven's too early, but I do feel better. He's risen up my board just a bit. Uh, D-card, what's max draft value after being declared QB1. Not someone I'm making an effort to go get. I will say that. Mac Jones, I am happy as a whole for the Patriots and the fantasy value of all the Patriots skill players that Mac Jones is the quarterback and not Cam Newton. But to me, Mac Jones is not even a top 20 fantasy quarterback. Now, maybe down the road as we learn more about this offense, and I think it's an offense that's going to be somewhat in flux. You know, it wasn't great last year. Now we're going on to a rookie quarterback in Mac Jones. We'll learn more. Maybe late in the season, he starts to get it going. The matchups look pretty good. You pick him up. You know, I don't. I, I think maybe you throw him as a QB2 in your deeper two quarterback leagues, but I think the numbers for Mac Jones won't be anything special for fantasy, but he'll be a help to the other Patriots around him. So good news as a whole, but for Mac Jones specifically, doesn't matter much for fantasy purposes. Let's talk about my risers and followers. Now, I want to go with a name I just mentioned. I mentioned him a couple of times. Alvin Kamara's actually moved up, and that probably sounds a little ridiculous, but I will say this. Now we're talking about Adam Schaupman being hurt. Michael Thomas at least six weeks out of the mix there. Who are they going to in this offense? They're going to Alvin Kamara. I would argue that Alvin Kamara could actually be the number one overall pick in fantasy football because talent and opportunity. If you get both of those things, you have a top, top, top tier player. That's what Alvin Kamara is. Christian McCaffrey going number one as the consensus. But for the same reasons that Christian McCaffrey is going number one are the same reasons you can make for Alvin Kamara. Both players on decent but probably average teams at best where they're clearly the focal point of the offense. And even more so in the case of Alvin Kamara, who have moved up a couple spots now in my top three running backs. Uh, also, we just talked about Mac Jones. Damian Harris has moved up my board. Uh, I actually think he could find his way into the top 12 at running back. Now, the Bellatrix, I've talked about them for years and years and years. Different running backs getting used, but I think this is the guy. Sony Michelle getting traded to the Rams is helpful. I, I just like where Mac Jones is going. You see the ADP there, 68.3. I think he will outperform that. And that ADP, obviously, is going off of somewhat, you know, not knowing about the quarterback. You know, Sony Michelle still being there. So I think you'll see drafts as you still do them over the next week. He'll go a little bit higher, but he's certainly moved up to me. I think he's going to wind up as a nice volume RB2. One more name, and this is more of me just thinking about it more, is Matthew Stafford. He has become my quarterback target in drafts because you don't have to take him early. You see where the ADP is at 85. That has moved up a little bit. He's a riser on his own. But as I think about it more, he is the target to me at the quarterback position. I'm not trying to get Mahomes or Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson because you're going to have to take them too high. Jared Goff averaged nearly 4,300 yards a season while with the Rams. There's going to be more reliance on the passing game 
with Stafford as quarterback, especially with Cam Akers being in there. Yes, I know they traded for Sony Michelle. Yes, I know they have Daryl Henderson, but I think Stafford becomes that much more important. Stafford is a far more talented quarterback than Jared Goff, and Jared Goff put up good numbers with the Rams. There'll be more touchdown opportunities. I am really, really feeling Matthew Stafford, and I think he legitimately has a chance to finish as a top five quarterback. The only thing that hurts him is the lack of legs. How about players that are falling for me based on where I had them to start the preseason and now? And I'm going to throw Kenny Galladay here. Hamstring injury, as I thought, has lingered. I think he'll be out there for week number one. We'll see. The lack of any buzz for the Giants as well. Not a lot of, you know, exciting news on a, on a team that I think hopes they'll be exciting. But a lot of things have to fall right. Uh, to me now, Kenny Galladay, it's pushed him firmly into the wide receiver three conversation. This is a guy who we consider a low-end wide receiver one at times with the Detroit Lions. A two at best, a two at worst, I should say. But now with this injury, I, I just, I want to feel better about the Giants, and I don't. So Kenny Galladay with the injury on top of everything else, really right now, not even inside my top 25. He has fallen a little bit at the wide receiver position. Let's talk about Miles Gaskin for the Miami Dolphins. Everyone expected him to clearly be the guy, and I don't think that's going to be the case, at least not what we saw in the last month. That could change, but I was hoping to go into the regular season with Miles Gaskin right on top of the depth chart with no concerns whatsoever in the Miami backfield, and I can't feel that way. It looks like a running back by committee. We're going to see Malcolm Brown. We're going to see Salvin Ahmed. You know, I, I thought it was his job to lose. I don't want to say he's lost it, but he doesn't have that firm grasp on it. And I'm not exactly excited about the Dolphins anyway. So he's dropped a little bit. I thought he'd be a very solid RB2, and I would kind of look at him as a flex play to start the season. With the hope maybe his play will move him up in the world. One more here. Let's talk about DeAndre Swift. They brought him up last week. This team stinks. The Lions are not good. He has the groin issue. They've talked about maybe, you know, his wind, his conditioning not being great. He's a far from proven player. The numbers were fine last year. I talked about Jamal Williams last week. All of these things concern me. So could he be a top 15 running back? I was hoping so. Initially, that's why I had him ranked. I have dropped him down. I would hope that he'll end up turning into a very solid top 20 running back this year. But I just don't feel good about the situation. You know, when your head coach who wants to run the football and talking about your conditioning, maybe that's just smoke and mirrors. Coach speak, you know, it could be a bunch of lies. They don't have to say a word to us. What I will say about Swift and Galladay, any of these injuries we brought up with these fallers, the first official injury report does not come out until next week. It'll come out early in the week for the Buccaneers and the Cowboys, and then on Wednesday for the rest of the game. So that's when we'll get some more concrete injury news. Unless it's a Michael Thomas where they end up on the PUP and they have to declare that before the start of the season. You're not going to get official injury reports until next week. So Swift is a name, Galladay is a name to keep an eye on. As we talk about the preseason, what about the takeaways? Before I get to mine, let's get to some of your questions. Uh, cans, Cans, eleven twenty-eight. Which winner of a preseason quarterback battle will have the most positive impact on the fantasy outlook of his teammates? I think Mac Jones is in that conversation. Uh, I think Ryan Fitzpatrick clearly being the guy. I feel better about Jameis Winston, and I'm not saying he's going to be anything great, but Taysom Hill is a gadget guy. Taysom Hill is not a starting NFL quarterback to me. You could do a lot with Taysom Hill, but I'd rather it be Jameis Winston. Not saying Jameis Winston will be great, but at least I know what he can do out there. And he is a typical quarterback in that way. So it's better news there. He'd probably highest up on my list, but of all those names I mentioned, nobody you're super excited about for fantasy purposes, more so in reality. Let's move on here. A good question from Cairns. Abby wants to know, whose preseason success will translate to the regular season is that a Najee Harris I think that's fair look the preseason you look out a lot differently right now because it's only three games teams are smart enough to not put guys out there because they don't need to so you know I, I look at rookies getting chances I look like a Mac Jones getting the chances and I think oh there, there could be something there um, it's nothing that I really get excited about though sometimes it's it's not getting injured and just going, okay, this team looks good. Like, there's not a lot of news about the Rams offense other than what happened with the running backs. You go, all right, that means nobody got hurt. That means we're feeling good. You know, the fact that we didn't see Saquon Barkley, they're playing it smart. Probably going to be fine. Good to go. Week number one. So it's more about avoiding those injuries, 
nothing bad happening. That's what I want out of the preseason. I say this all the time. If there's off-season news and it's real news, 95% of the time, it's bad news. If you avoided bad news, I'm feeling good about you. As long as nothing really went wrong and rankings can stay as they are for a McCaffrey or a Camara or a Dak Prescott or guys like that, you're going, okay, as long as things are looking good, that's what I'm taking going into the start of the regular season. Uh, another one here from Chris Johnson, whose stock rises the most because of other players' uh, preseason injury. Look, we've talked about Daryl Henderson with Cam Akers being down, although Sony Michelle hurt that a little bit. Um, Gus Edwards is obviously the hottest name right now. With J.K. Dobbins out for the year, and, and I did mention this with Dobbins, I thought Gus Edwards would stay involved. The Ravens used Gus Edwards. They used Dobbins. They used Lamar Jackson, which you cannot forget. All of these guys were going to touch the ball in the backfield. But Gus Edwards, because the Ravens are a run first team, that's not going to change, even though they've made improvements to their passing game and made some additions. The bottom line is this is a run first team. Gus Edwards at the front of the line of a run first team. The team trusts him. He has proven he has taken the big leap. I think he can finish inside the top 15 this regular season at the running back position. Now, some of my takeaways. Let's get to these. I think, and I know that Carson Wentz and the O-line looks better and they're off the COVID list. I am not in on the Colts. I'm kind of looking for reasons to not draft Jonathan Taylor. And I know you're going to look at me and go, wait a minute, he's, he's ranked inside your top 14 at running back. and He's going at the end of the first round. Or he's going at the top of the second round. These are all true things. And in the right spot, I would probably still take him. But there's too much to prove here for the Colts with the O-line issues. T.Y. Hilton now out of the mix. Do you feel great about those receivers like Paris Campbell or Michael Pittman who have you know, dealt with their own issues in, in recent years? There's not a lot here that I'm excited about, and I feel like this is a team that's going to take some time to gel and figure it all out. Now, that might mean that it's a lot of Jonathan Taylor. And I hope that's the case. But if I'm kind of looking for tiebreakers, you know, if it's an Aaron Jones or a Jonathan Taylor, when in doubt, I'm going with the better team. If it's a Jonathan Taylor or one of these wide receivers that's pushing down the board, whether it be Tyree Kill or Stephon Diggs or DeAndre Hopkins, I might just say, go, you know what, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to take someone like one of those wide receivers versus a Jonathan Taylor. I just wish I could feel better about the Colts, and I don't. The Broncos. The Broncos could be sneaky good for fantasy. Teddy Bridgewater gets the starting job. I would also throw that name, previous question, I kind of saved it for here, into something that's better for all the fantasy players around him. You feel good about Jerry Judy. Cortland Sutton looked like he was good to go at the end of the preseason. The backfield, could it be a little annoying? We'll see. I like Noah Fant. I've always liked Noah Fant. There's a lot of good things here. Now, Teddy Bridgewater, I think, is hyped up sometimes a little bit too much. There's people that liked him coming out of college that – really never gave up on him, and even though he's never really been that good, it's, all right, he, he can do it. I think he's a better player ceiling-wise than a Drew Locke, which is better for everyone around him. I kind of like Denver. I think there's some intrigue there, and when you look at the division and the, de the defenses that they will face with the Chiefs and the Raiders, um, I, you know, I, I don't get too scared off about it. Obviously, the Chargers better defense there as well, but I kind of like the Broncos for fantasy. And you don't really have to make any massive investments in terms of where their ADP is right now. And once again, and this goes back, and this is an unfortunate bummer, but it's realistic. We're back to like a handful of good tight ends. You got Kittle and Kelsey and Darren Waller and Mark Andrews and Hawkinson and even a rookie and Kyle Pitts is in that conversation. But after that, there's a lot of questions, whether it be Noah Fan. You know, we've talked about Evan Ingram. We've talked about Everett. We, you know, Rob Gronkowski, where does he fit? Dallas Goddard, pretty solid. You would have liked to have seen Ertz get traded away, but that didn't happen. So we're back to if you get one of those five or six tight ends that everybody's excited about, you should have a big advantage. But if you don't, it's okay because you're probably going to play the streaming game. But if you get one of those top five or six, you do have a big advantage. Unfortunately, we're back to only a handful of truly elite tight ends. All right, you guys may have drafted already. And if that's the case, you've got some teams that you need me to look at. So let's take a look at what teams look like after drafts are done here because you have sent me your rosters. Let's take a look at Texas Nation. What do you think of my team? Aaron Rodgers, Antonio Gibson, Josh Jacobs. Pretty good start there. Devontae Adams. Ooh, I love the double rainbow there. Rodgers to Adams. Justin Jefferson, Pitts, Claypool in the flex. 
Uh, kicker and defense, I don't care. Neither should you. Bench is looking good with Jujo. Melvin Gordon fine as a bench player. Landry, uh, what else we got there? Malcolm Brown, Beasley, Carr. Look, I, I will say this. I don't think you need, first of all, Texas Nation, good job on your team. Uh, this is a very strong team, and you're not really worried about too much here. You're great at every position. Claypool as a flex is good to go. I will say, I don't think you need to keep a Derek Carr around. You got Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers gets hurt or when it's his bye week, go pick up another quarterback then. Go grab somebody else. Grab a, a lottery ticket kind of player that you could stash away. Marquez Callaway for the Saints. If he's out there, maybe stash him away. Somebody like that. Texas Nation, you got a great team there, uh, but a guy like Carr, kind of useless on the on this roster because you have a number one quarterback already in Aaron Rodgers. So good there, job there by Texas Nation. Let's see another team here. Um, Hey, Sosa, first pick in the 10-man. So, let's see. Where did you go with that? You went with, uh, well, what running back did you take? I, I think you took Christian McCaffrey on this team. I saw this team earlier. But I look at this team here, Aaron Rodgers again. Uh, Miles Sanders, who's not getting a lot of love. He's a fine RB2. DK Metcalf, Lamb, great job at your first two receiver spots. Kittle, obviously, solid. Montgomery, Edmonds, Harris. This is a good team. Once again, a good team here. Uh, a 10-teamer, I will tell you this. If you go into the regular season in a 10-teamer and you have a bad team, you did something wrong. In a 10-teamer, unless it's two quarterbacks or a massive starting lineup, you should pretty much have a good team. So this is a good team on paper. I think the depth, I mean, geez, Cooper Cup on your bench is great. He's probably in there over IU. Um, but this is a good team. It's a solid team there. Picking out of the number one spot, I'd be happy with this. Once again, you feel good about it, but always be thinking about that waiver wire. You're a little light at running back, not awful. Uh, I would just be keeping an eye out on the uh, wide receiver, uh, excuse me, the running back spot. One more here from Zorro, 10-teamer, had pick seven. Kyler Murray, Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson, uh, Deontay Johnson, very good one, two, three there. Jonathan Taylor, but James Robinson, Mike Kosicki, there's a spot I don't feel great about. Kosicki's a, eh, right on the cusp of the tight end one conversation. But I look in your other here, you got Mike Davis, you got Sermon, uh, you got Michael Thomas, you got Corey Davis. Carter, I think that's David Johnson there. So you got good depth. I would look around. I would look around the tight end. I'm not saying make a trade, but also you don't have to stick with Kosicki, but the rest of this team is so good that, here you go, great example. You are so loaded at wide receiver. You have the number one wide receiver to me in Devontae Adams. Allen Robinson is in the middle range of that wide receiver one conversation. Uh, Deontay Johnson, a solid two. Obviously, a lot of mouths to feed in Pittsburgh. But you're so loaded there. You got a low-end RB1 in Jonathan Taylor. You got a high-end RB2 in James Robinson. You got some depth there. I would look around at tight end. I would just say, hey, I'm interested in tight end. What does somebody have to give me? But I'm not running to go make a trade there. All right, so good job. So all these teams, 10 team, or like I said, they should look good. But don't forget, you're going to go hit that waiver wire at some point anyway. It's just the nature of fantasy nowadays. All right, some burning questions here as we finish up our final show seven days before the start of the regular season. Ram says, who do I draft with the fifth pick in a 10-team full PPR? So let's think about what a draft could look like. Probably McCaffrey goes. Probably Dalvin Cook goes. Uh, Alvin Kamara, I feel like that's what we're kind of settling into. Maybe Zeke's gone there. Maybe Derrick Henry's gone there. If those names are gone, I am very much happy, very happy to take Devontae Adams at five. No problem whatsoever. Very safe, in a great offense. Aaron Rodgers back. If you get Devontae Adams at five, you're good to go. Don't feel like you have to take a running back. In those first five picks, full PPR, you know, a little hit to Derrick Henry. A little bit. Is he the best running back in reality in the NFL? He very well could be. But always remember, not going to have a big role in the passing game and Julio Jones there as well. Rams, I'd love to take Devontae Adams at five. If Alvin Kamara were to fall there or Henry, you're good going there as well. Uh, let's get another one here from Tim. Tim has a question about the Chiefs. Draft Patrick Mahomes or draft Travis Kelsey. I will take Travis Kelsey. Not 10 times, not 50 times, but 100 times out of 100, I'm taking Travis Kelsey. You never have to take quarterback early. I, I'm just, I'm telling you, you don't have to do it. Travis Kelsey is going to be a first round pick, maybe top of the second round pick. He is going to give you such an advantage in tight end position, and you can go get somebody later on. You can go get Aaron Rodgers. You can go get Matthew Stafford. You can go get Tom Brady. I know Mahomes is great. I get it. But you don't have to take quarterback early. Give me Travis Kelsey. Give me the number one tight end in all of fantasy football. And let me build around him early in my draft. You use an early pick on a quarterback, you're probably going to hurt your team. It's gone this way forever. 
you watch any of the industry drafts or expert drafts or anything like that, you're not going to see quarterbacks go early. That's not a mistake. You can find that position, you can fill in that position, or you can draft it a little bit later on. A couple more questions here, one more question I'd say, as we'll wrap things up here. And this one comes in from Freddie. Trade Travis Kelsey, Paris Campbell, for Gus Edwards, Mike Williams, and Robert Tanya. No, 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 no. You are trading away the best player. I know Robert Tanyan, probably in that top 10 conversation, but Paris Campbell, uh, you know, is he on top of the depth chart right now for the Colts? He very well could be. Just, just think about targets. You know, I know, I know Mike Pittman's there as well, but I'm trading away the best player in this deal. Gus Edwards is solid. We know his stock is on the rise, but as a whole, as we look at the other side of this deal, it doesn't give me much excitement. Mike Williams is fine. Robert Tanyan is fine. Gus Edwards is more than fine. But you're trading away a star caliber player, a league winning player, a stud, one of the best, if not the best at the position, and you're getting pieces back. That doesn't get me. If I'm trading away Travis Kelsey, I want to be fired up about my return. I am not fired up about Gus Edwards, Mike Williams, and Robert Tanyan. Not worth making the deal. I don't know why you're doing this deal. I'm guessing you're probably hurting at running back. Maybe you lost to J.K. Dobbins, but I think you're hurting your team. Doesn't matter where the points come from because if you have a guy like Kelsey, guess what? You have the advantage of tight end every single week. Not worth making a deal like this. I want to thank everybody for joining me here for the last four shows. Uh, a little extra time before now, between now and the start of the regular season. So don't tinker things too much. Obviously, keep an eye. Maybe there's some more cuts to be made. Maybe there's a trade to be made in the NFL, not your league. But take your time. Take a look at those injury reports next week. You're going to find out some information we didn't necessarily know. Uh, I want to thank you once again. Hit me up on Twitter with your questions at the Matt Camp. there. Good luck to you in the 2021 fantasy football season. Go win some championships. I'm Matt Camp, and this has been your Fantasy Fire Joe.